Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Afifah Nazila Binti Azman and today I will present about history of kingdoms and contributors to the discovery. Let's begin with the history of divergence theorem. This is a study by Vijayan Nuru and Prince. 2015, divergence theorem was discovered in 1761 by a mathematician by Joseph Lewis he discovered divergence theorem but could not provide a new proof for this theorem. Later, a mathematician called Carl Friedrich Gross rediscovered it in 1819. He also could not provide any proof for divergence theorem. Meanwhile, Judge Green also rediscovered divergence theorem without knowing the work of Lagrange and Gross. But his work nearly been discarded due to his unclear results. Later, in 1831, a proper credit was given to Russian Mikhail Vasilyevich Ostrogratsky for being the first ever mathematician to prove the divergence theorem. Next, Johnson 2020 explained that the divergence theorem states the net upward flux of a vector field across a closed surface in a space can be calculated by integrating the divergence of the field over the region enclosed by a surface. The divergence theorem has many uses in physics. In particular, the divergence theorem is used in the field of partial differential equations to derive equations modeling, heat flow and conservation of mass. The the theorem is used to calculate flux integrals and apply them to electrostatic fields. Next, history of Green's theorem. Green's theorem was discovered in 1828 by Judge Green. At that time, Green's theorem was not the main idea of the work and was not yet considered to be two dimensional case of the divergence theorem. However, Green's more efficient work did not receive well by people around him at that time because his work was too advanced for the people. Later, a mathematician named William Thomson republished Green's work and realized the importance of Green's theorem. In 1846, Green's theorem had been proved by Augustine Lewis, but still, it was not recognized for many years. Next, History of Stokes Theorems Judge Green not only discovered Green's theorem but also revealed contents in Green's theorem as contents in Stokes' theorem. William Thomson or Lord Kevin Lee discovered the importance of Green's theorem and also found that contents Stokes' theorem. The collaboration of Kevin and Judge Gabriel Stokes, Stokes' theorems are being investigated. In some resources, Herman Henkel one of the Stark students was considered to be the first mathematician who provided a solid proof to Stark's theorem. Contributors to the discovery First, Joseph Lewis Lagrange. The word Lagrange started in the 18th century, was a professor of mathematics at the Royal Artillery School a leading founder of a new society called the Royal Academy of Sciences of Turin, he discovered divergence theorem. Second, Russian Mikhail Vasilyevich Ostrogratsky. He studied physics and mathematics at the University of Kharkov, never received his degree due to religious and internal problems, studied under several great mathematicians such as Pierre Simon Laplace, Joseph Fuhrer, and Augustine Blaise Cauchin. He rediscovered the divergence theorem and provided a proof. Third, Judge Green. He only received four semesters of formal schooling at Robert Goodberg Schools in Nottingham. Green joined a library at in Nottingham and had access to more advanced mathematics. He discovered Green's theorem. Augustine Lewis Houghton. He attended Equal Polytechnic and had Andrew Murray, MP as his tutor, self acclaimed by Pierre de Fermat on polygonal numbers, proved King's theorem by 
Healing Cultures and Regular Tierra. Fifth, Herman Hunkel, under at the Nikolai Gymnasium and University of Leipzig, studied mathematics under August Marcus and physics under his father's, studied at the University of Göttingen where he studied under George Friedrich Bernhard Wilhelm, received his doctorate in 1862 and began teaching at Leipzig in 1863, teach at Tübingen in 1869, and lastly proved stock theorems. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Ain Menti Muhammad Kusharin Faisal, and I will present about similarities and relationships between the Green's theorem and Stokes theorem. There are five parts that I will make a comparison, which are from its theorem, figure, similarities, relationship, and difference. Firstly, its theorem for Green's theorem. Let's see be a positively oriented, piecewise smooth, simple closed curve in the plane and let D be the region bounded by C. If P and Q have continuous partial derivative on an open region that contains D, then the formula is integrate D P D S plus Q D S equal to double integrate D delta Q over delta S minus delta P over delta Y D A. Next, for the Stokes theorem, let S be an oriented piecewise smooth surface that is bounded by a simple, closed, piecewise smooth boundary curve C with positive orientation. Let F be a components have continuous partial derivative on an open region in R3 that contains C. Then the formula is integrate C F D R equal to double integrate S curl F D S. Secondly is figure. From the figure 1, we assume that D consists of all points inside C as well as all points on C. In the figure 2, in stating Green's theorem, we use the convention that the positive orientation of a simple closed curve C refers to a single counterclockwise traversal of C. Thus, if C is given by the vector function RP, T is greater than and equal to A and less than and equal to B. Then, the region D is always on the left as the point RP traverses C. Next is Stokes theorem. In the figure 1, shows an oriented surface with unit normal vector n. The orientation of S induces the positive orientation of the boundary curve C shown in the figure. This means that if you walk in the positive direction around C with your head pointing in the direction of N, then the surface will always be on your left. Next is the point similarities. Green's theorem and Stokes theorem has the similar expression on the left hand sides. In both theorem, we integrate a derivative over a region and this integral is equal to an expression involving the values of the original function on the, on the boundary of the region. Next is for relationship. Green's theorem is the two-dimensional case of the divergence theorem. Green's theorem relates a double integral over a plane region D to a line integral around its plane boundary curve. For the Stokes theorem, is a general case of both the divergence theorem and Green's theorem. In 2016, Stewart mentioned Stokes theorem relates a surface integral over a surface S to a line integral around the boundary curve of S, which is, is a space curve. At first, Green Wu is the first person that is proposed the theorem. Then, Thomson continued the Green's works because he realized the importance of the theorem. Thomson and Stokes made a collaboration and worked together to discover the work of Green. Stokes 
was applied the theorem as a problem on one of its exams and thus the theorem became known as Scopes theorem. And lastly is the point difference between the Green's theorem and Scopes theorem. For the Green's theorem, C is used for a curve in the plane, while for Scopes theorem, C is used for a curve in space. That's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nilam Srifahana bin Abdul Aziz and today we will discuss the roles that Green, Thompson and Stokes played in discovering this theorem and making them widely known. In 1828, George Green secretly published an essay on the application of mathematical analysis to the theories of electricity and magnetism, but only 100 copies were printed with the majority going to his friend. This pamphlet presented a theorem that is equal to Green's theorem today, but it was not well known at the time. His magnificent work could not be realized by those around him as it was too advanced. Green died in 1840, and it wasn't until William Thomson republished his work in 1845 that he grasped the significance of Green's mathematics. Green theorem was further developed by William Thomson by extending it into third dimension. Green is credited with being the first attempt to construct a mathematical theory of electricity and magnetism. Thomson, Stokes, Rayleigh, and Maxwell's electromagnetic theories were all based on his work. Thomson then shares his findings through a letter to George Stokes. In a letter from William Thomson in 1850, Stokes learned of this theorem and urged students to prove it in an examination at Cambridge University in 1854. We have no idea if any of those pupils were successful. The same concepts apply to three-dimensional surfaces according to Stokes' theorem. We can conclude that the roles of these three men in discovering these theorems and making them well known are Green's theorem was developed by George Green, but Stokes' theorem was developed by William Thomson based on a theorem by Green. And George Stokes is given credit for Thomson's theorem since he published it and make it well known until now. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurfadira binti Ahmad Tajuddin. I am presenter number 4. Today I want to show how both theorem arose from the investigation of electricity and magnetism and were later used to study a variety of physical problems. So Green theorem, just Green took up a current research interest in mathematical physics, applying volume and surface integral to analyze electricity and magnetism. Just Green assumed that electricity and magnetism is required one fluid and he interpreted their density at a point to be their quantity there. Aside from simple gases, he calculated it using potential function and equation. Green also considered various electrical gases. For Stokes' theorem, it is used to derive many important equations in physics, including Ampere law, the continuity equation, and Gauss law. Furthermore, electromagnetism is generally viewed as the prototypical application of vector calculus in which electric and magnetic quantities are defined as function of space and time. Many studies use Stokes theorem and Green theorem in terms of electricity and magnetism to solve their problem. For Green theorem, a study by Browning and Wilson 2013 proposed a greater theoretical formulation of Green theorem for electromagnetic field and utilized the results to reconsider certain fundamental concepts and theorem of electromagnetic field theory. This study will help to emphasize the importance of Green theorem in electromagnetic field theory and shed some interesting new light on the radiation integral, fusion principle, reciprocity, energy conservation, uniqueness, and other electromagnetic field theory principles. For Stokes theorem, it is used to calculate the retarded vector potential of loop antenna for electric and magnetic field radiation. Simulation of the ideal and actual magnetic dipole antenna show that the two antenna are in good agreement. The simulation results were further tested experimentally by the demonstration experiment, which confirmed the simulation results. The direction of the radiated electric field in the experimental setup is depicted graphically. 
Therefore, the thrower tickled the simplification and experimental design will provide a better understanding of the radiation of an electrically small loop antenna to other people. Furthermore, stock theorem is important for constructing magnetic field to contain the plasma, iron gas. It can be used to answer the question of whether quasi-symmetric field, those with integrable guiding center motion, can be catered to little or not weather current. Moreover, concept of stock theorem is widely used for the physical integration of the circulation concept among the magnetic and electric field. This theorem also is used to analyze the formation of eddy current in electromagnetic. That's all, thank you.